What son does not want to throw a rubber burrito in their father's face and just smack them? It's fun. So you just want to play games with your son, but you just can't figure out what would be some good place. Or you're an adult child and you just want to play games with your dad. It's sweet. It's adorable. Fathers and sons should play games together. So don't panic. We're going to look through 10, maybe 11 games that you can play as father and son. Now these, of course, this applies to playing with your daughter. This can be mothers and daughters, whatever. I would actually love to see somebody make a mothers and daughters video. Maybe there's one out there to see, is it any different or is it exactly the same? We're gonna run the gamut of the price range from the $10 range all the way up to more like, I don't think we go above 60, up to the $60 range. All games are currently available. So these are ages of games as listed on the box. So we're looking at middle school age sons up to high school, up to full on adults. You can be in your 30s, in your 40s, playing with your six year old dad, whatever. It works with those ranges. Let's get started. Very first game that I would recommend for a father and son to have a great night together is Squirrel or Die. This is by Fight in a Box Games. And this is a one to four, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is a two to four player game. This particular one does not have a solo mode. Most of the games I try to feature do have solo modes. This one does not, but you're gonna have a great time with your son. It's a simple idea. You're playing through the seasons as squirrels, laying cards out in tiles, where you're first like uh, taking a look at the yard and you're trying to not trigger these death cards because if you get three death cards, you're out. So it's sort of a game of memory and strategy where the cards are laid out, you take one and then you place one face down and you try to remember what you put face down and you try to collect the cards that give you some kind of power. If you collect food, you're safe. If you collect a death card, you gotta lay it up. There are also cards with special powers. Again, the first person to get three deaths dies. Simple idea, super fun with you and your son. One of the biggest things kids like is owning their dads. So give them a chance to try. Squirrel or die. Next game. We're going to do one that sort of has a solo mode. Okay, so you'll see uh, Daniel and I played Token Terrors and we put a review of up and this is sort of like Twisted Chess. Uh, quite different from chess because you have asymmetrical powers and special abilities and all this stuff. But it's the same idea where you have a grid. It's a small grid with little miniatures. The miniatures are great, so it's called a mini, mini game. This is two player only. The solo modes, there are six solo modes. You buy those separately. They're standalone games. They're like $10, $12, something like that. Um, or you can get them all for 60 something like that. But you can go to the website from Token Terror's Games. I'm pretty sure it's, oh no, it's Terrible Games. That's the name of the company. Um, but they're super cool, super nice. Check out our review. But anyway, for a father and son, this is if you have a competitive son, all right? Or you have a competitive dad, whatever. I'm looking at it from the perspective of dad to son. Just flip it around. Let's say you have a competitive son. He likes something strategic, but also wants to be able to kind of play around. This is great. It's got little kind of like a campaign where you can unlock special achievements, special missions, abilities, more difficult modes as you battle against each other. The goal is each one of you is on a war field, you're trying to eliminate the opponent. First one to eliminate all of the enemy pieces wins, all right? This is not for your cooperative playing son, okay? This will stress him out. Don't do it to him. If he's competitive, tear him up, take him down, or even better, let your son take you down. It's more entertaining. All right, who doesn't love golf, okay? Golf, duffers. Does it get any more man, father, son than golf? Not for me, not for me. I will take cuddly kittens all day long, but lots of people do like golf. And I actually enjoy this game, duffers. This is by TGG Games, one to four players, ages 14 and up. I should give you the, I just assume it's middle school age and up. All right, I'm not gonna read the ages on all these. Um, none of them are mature content. Uh, so anyway, Duffers is where you are actually, it's basically solitaire with cards, but you have a market where you're shopping for different golfing gear, your putters and all this. I don't play golf, so I don't know a whole lot about it. But in the two player version, you've got like six to nine holes, something like that, or three holes at a time where you are laying down cards that symbolize how far you're able to drive the ball. So you can be like, all right, this is I drove this 234 yards. Well, then you want to do something. You want to play another card that's going to be less because you don't want to overshoot the hole. So you're playing cards with numbers that also have special abilities. And you also have cards that get thrown into your hand that are like trash that make you go off course. And you're just trying to get to par 
and have the least amount of points. It's golf scoring, but you also get to buy new equipment from the shop to upgrade. So it's pretty fun for you and your son to go at it with that. The solitaire game is basically card solitaire, just with a little bit of a twist that makes it golf. But that's pretty much what it is, is glorified solitaire for the one player mode. All right, let's go to another with a solo mode. This is actually a fan-made solo mode. This collection here has the least amount of solo game options, but I'm, I'm not going to rule them out because you can still play them alone, but I'm telling you, these are these are fun to play with your son. Um, I don't care how old he is. Jaws. Who doesn't like Jaws, right? And what's great about this is it is not what it's not asymmetrical. What do we call that? Maybe it is asymmetrical. No, it's where you have one player pitted against, you can have several players pitted against one. So maybe your son and your daughter, or, you know, whatever. Whatever. Anyway, maybe you have two children. Goodness forbid. All right, so Jaws, one of you plays the shark. You're actually playing through the movie in two scenes. So the first one starts on Amity Island. Is that what it is? It's the island. And it's so father-son-ish because you actually have the one character who is the father and his son is like out swimming. He's one of the swimmers that might get eaten. And if he does get eaten, that's really bad for the human players. You end up losing like more points because he's especially valuable because the dad loves his son. It's very sweet. How thematic. But anyway, one of you gets to play the shark. It should be the dad trying to take everybody down. Let your, I don't care if they're adult children, let them try and take you out. The rest of you play the three main characters of the movie and you're trying to catch the shark. So it's a hidden movement as the shark. You know what you're doing. You know where you are. The other players do not and they're trying to catch you. When you finish scene one, Either person can win. Whoever wins has an advantage in scene two, which takes place on the boat. What is it, the orca? I believe it's the orca. And the human ones are trying to hunt the shark. The shark's just going in a circle around the boat, tearing it apart a piece at a time until there's only water left. Incredibly thematic. If you want to play it solo, you need to go to Board Game Geek. I'll put a link in the description below. There's a fan-made solo mode. It is fantastically well done. It does require a little bit of reading in order to learn it. But Father Son Knight, pull out Jaws. Come on. What a good time. All right. Let's get a uh, recently played one, actually. Small Islands. Uh, Daniel and I, we've got a review coming up. We've already done our play. We already know our thoughts. We just need to get the review out. And fun thing is, is one of us lost. And as always, there's the loser's punishment. And the loser's punishment is the loser has to do a 90s senior high school photos photo shoot. And we're going to scatter those pictures throughout the video. And of course, the winner got to decide what they wore and pose them and all that. So it will be thoroughly humiliating for the poor loser, whoever it will be. It might be me. It might not. It might be Daniel. Anyway, Small Islands. Warning about this game. There is the chance for a runaway winner particularly the first time you play. This is if you have a more competitive son or if you can both be playful, okay? You either both need to be competitive or both need to be playful. The reason for the runaway winner is as you play this game, you are laying tiles down. It's a tile, what do they call it? A tile laying game. Where you are laying tiles to explore the ocean and create small islands. You have secret, secret objectives. And at the end of every round, you try to fulfill that objective by placing one of eight huts, you only get eight in the game, onto those small islands that you make to meet the criteria for your objective. And whoever gets the most gets the most points for that round, right? The other thing you get to do is place a ship in the ocean. You only get one ship of your own color. If you're just playing with your son, it's two of you, then there are two neutral ships. No matter what, you always have to play four ships because it's a one to four player game. Here's where the ships are important. They give you control. So if you place it early, you may place it in an optimal location that maximizes points. If you place it at the end of the game, you might not be able to maximize for points, but you have control. Because here's the thing, how do you end a round? Placing a ship. Whoever places a ship ends the round. So what happens if you placed your ship in round one and the two neutral ships in round two and three, round four, the final player has the final ship. What does that mean? They can keep the game going until you flat out run out of tiles and they can just wreck you. Runaway win. 
but not if you know that that happens. If you know that happens, it's totally preventable. So it isn't unfair, it's just something that can happen. If your kids don't like uh, that runaway win kind of thing and you're really competitive as the dad, please don't destroy your kids and make them not enjoy the game. Oh my goodness. Anyway, small islands, beautiful artwork, lots of strategy in how you place these islands. You can make a lot of points by making one big island, save it for the end of the game, or make a bunch of small islands. All kinds of choices. Love it. Small islands. And the, the prices have been flashing up on the screen with everything. But as a quick recap, off the top of my head, because of course I don't remember, this is probably about $14 to $16, Squirrel or Die Token Terrors, I believe is $40 to $50, if I have that correct, for the base game. Each solo mode is like $12, $13, or get all six for $60. This is like $30, $30 $35, something like that. Small Islands is around $30 to $40. Jaws is the same, around $25 to $30. $35 so far. So I'm trying not to go too expensive for you here. Exploding Kittens, two player version. All right, father, son, exploding kittens. Super fun. This is an easy game to learn. You can play it in five to 10 minutes. And it's simply a game of playing chicken, really, where each of you has a deck of cards and you are trying not to draw, similar to Squirrel or Die, you're trying not to draw the exploding kitten. You draw the exploding kitten, you're dead. So you have all kinds of cards in your hand to try to make it so that you don't draw the exploding kitten. You have one deck, you have to draw cards, you have to play cards. You're just trying to navigate it so that you know where the exploding kitten is and they have to draw it and kaboom. It's adorable, it's fun, easy, light, $12, something like that. What did I pay? $10, okay, $10. I'm trying to keep these low for you. Uh, no solo mode for exploding kittens. So let's go to a solo mode. Let's go to a work of art, the initiative. This is cooperative. You have a son that likes to play cooperative games with you. He wants to be with dear old dad team up. Um, again, I don't care if he's an adult, but I could see this with you know middle school age, high school age, this just being a really good time. So the initiative is a code breaking game where you play through a comic book story. There's a full storyline that you unlock as you go through 14 or 15 missions, something like that. This is a legacy game. You permanently change things as you play through the story. At the end of the game, you do have a fully replayable game with new challenges. I saw no need to keep playing. Others I know have because I've checked the forums on it. I just, I was content. But anyway, what it is is you are actually moving your pieces around your little characters, these four teenagers, you're moving them around on a board as they are trying to break these codes and figure out some secret about some shady organization. So it's very 1980s, kids on bikes, that's the theme. You move them around on the board to collect clues. You use those clues to decipher a code that is set for that mission. If you fail that code, you still keep moving forward, but you lose some advantages. You don't get as much of the story. If you win, you get some advantages. There are all kinds of different code breaking and it goes in layers. So one code helps you break another code, then they get combined. There are all kinds of secret things that have you looking way outside the box without spoiling it. So uh, I, I adore this game. I think this is a family game and this is, this is a father-son game. I would, I played it all solo, um, so I can't genuinely replay it again. If there's a sequel, I think I would want to play it cooperative for the experience, but solo, beautiful, lovely. Okay, Unmatched, come on. This is, he doesn't have to be super competitive. Um, if you've got a son that just likes dinosaurs, come on. I like the Jurassic Park one, Un, Unmatched, of course, you can mix and match any theme you want. You can buy the Bigfoot ones, whatever. There are so many different themes, each one is and, oh yeah, initiative is probably about 40 bucks. Jurassic Park, unmatched, what is this, $30? Something like that. Got a gigantic T-Rex, I've got the Raptor one as well. Um, but this is just fun, each one of you gets a deck of cards, you've got a board between you, this is similar to Token Terrors where this is a duel, this is a face-off, but it's not gonna be quite as serious, I don't think, um, just because of the theme. But very challenging, as Dr. Sadler, I, I was able to own the t-rex but you can win with the t-rex mix and match but anyway yeah you have like five cards in your hand with different powers you play something to battle the opponent they're able to defend then it's their turn they are able to move around the board 
it's thematic it takes place where the jeep thing happened in the very first movie good time the other is in the raptor pen i've got the other unmatched somewhere over here and it happens in the raptor pen but anyway unmatched father and son duel great time i would call it lighthearted. Uh, i'm gonna save this uh, no let's just do this this one is special okay uh, so that's two player only for unmatched throw through avocado is about 25 bucks you can also do throw through a burrito no there's no solo mode i've got enough solo modes in here for you though so don't don't go away stay around this is fun you can play this two players two to six players yeah two to six players ages seven and up party game so you can play this with just two you can also get the gigantic um outdoor burrito version if you buy throw through avocado and throw through a burrito it unlocks a secret mode that is in this box that I haven't played yet. Here's why this is good, though. What son does not want to throw a rubber burrito in their father's face and just smack them? It's fun. Maybe it's the other way around. So I had a cool experience with this. Um, I had like a father-son night. There was like three dads. The reason it was it was so enjoyable is this poor kid. I mean, he's like 17 or something like that. But this poor kid, it wasn't even his turn to get smacked in the face. You, you have to throw the burrito at people at different points. This poor kid, it wasn't even his turn. His dad just had this like reflex to throw this and just smash it in his face. And it was so sad. It was so sad and adorable. Um, but anyway, what's fun is you have, each of you has cards, so it's like card drafting. So you have a set of cards, and you're going around the table really fast passing these cards. So you have to drop a card, take a card, drop a card, take a card. So you're passing cards around to each other. If it's two player, it's just back and forth. Nothing special going on there. But here's the thing, you get certain combinations of cards, you can play them. Either for points, or they have duels, fights. One of them is like a freeze war, where as soon as you lay it down, you yell freeze war, and whoever's playing, reach for the avocados, there's two of them, and throw them at each other if you get hit, you freeze. So obviously if it's two player, just you and your son, maybe you have a couple sons, maybe it's three player, maybe it's your whole family together. Whoever the last one unfrozen is, wins that one. The other is you put something down, I forget what the name of the special ability is, but it means the person to your right and left immediately have to grab for the avocado and throw out the other person. If you catch it, of course, in any of these cases, the other person loses. But whoever gets hit first or whoever catches it, you know, wins. That's that. And then there's the funnest one. Uh, this one was kind of special to me. It was fun. Uh, so I was playing and it's like a leg. What is it? A leg war where you both have to stand back to back. You have to take three steps, yell, throw through avocado or something like that. Turn around, throw it under your legs in some way. And whoever gets hit loses that, right? That means maybe no one gets hit, so you're scrambling around the house. Be careful, guys. Be very careful. Um, but it doesn't get much more father sen reckless than that. Maybe brothers. Have fun with a couple brothers with that. It's a special game. Absolutely lovely. All right, something with a solo mode. Here we go. And yes, we're going to 11 games. I don't care. I put 10 because algorithms. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, if this is useful to you, please consider subscribing. I do my best to provide you with something that will help you have a good time with your families and also playing board games by yourself because they're both so enjoyable. So I try to find as many games as I can that have multiplayer and solo and are solid games. Sometimes I'll feature solo only. Sometimes I'll feature family only. It's still a solo gamers library. So consider subscribing. Give me a like if you enjoy this video. What games would you put? Mothers, please. I, I, have, I have plenty of mothers watching this. What would you play with your sons? What would you play with your daughters? I would love to know. Is it the same games? Is it different games? Just fill the comments with suggestions and help people out. I love it. Okay, Star Wars The Clone Wars. This is for your cooperative son who loves Star Wars. This is a pandemic system game. So I hope I put the right pictures this time. Last time I featured this, I put up pandemic pictures, not Star Wars. My apologies, I hope I fix it. But anyway, you get to play as any of the famous Jedi from the Clone Wars movie, and you're fighting against the Sith in the, well, it's not just the Sith, but you know, the Sith and all their minions in the Clone Wars movie as well. They're dropping droids all over the place. You're trying to put fires out, so you're trying to put out this revolt over here on this planet. Meanwhile, this, you know, Ventress is over here doing something diabolical, so you also get to, got to get to her. You, you have like three, four, or five missions, depending on the difficulty level, so there is scaled difficulty that you need to complete in order to win the game. 
If the Galaxy gets overrun with droids and Sith, then you lose the game. Simple. 60 bucks. I think this is the most expensive game I have on here. Star Wars. The Clone Wars. I've got a How to Play video up. Check it out. Play solo. Beautiful. This last one might surprise you. These are in no particular order, by the way. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Okay, this is for a very special evening, uh, a special sign. If you're both adults, well over 21, pour yourself some scotch and enjoy this. Otherwise, pour yourself some hot chocolate and enjoy it together. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a mystery game. I picked this over Chronicles of Crime because it's just a better game, but if you want something more digital and that you're using your phone to see stuff, things like that, get Chronicles of Crime. It's a good game. It's solid. It's fine. This one is all paper and it's a ton of reading, okay? But it is very atmospheric reading where you have a mystery. There's what, 10 mysteries in here? I might be lying. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's four. Let me open it up. I haven't done them all. You're going to see pictures, but hey, look, there's a map. It opens up. It's a big old map. You've got case. Oh, yeah, it's like 10. You've got all these cases, right? Where a murder or something like that happens. And you get to solve it together. Each one of you takes a turn where you get to be like, all right, I'm going to follow this lead. I'm going to go to the opera house and I'm going to ask this person. You turn to a certain page in the book. It tells you what they said. You write it down. And at the end, when you're ready to solve it, based on how many rounds it took you, you get a certain number of points. Sherlock Holmes also gets a certain number of points. You're trying to beat his score. So this is you and your son working together, trying to beat the greatest detective of all time behind, of course, Batman. It's a great time, but you have to enjoy reading an atmosphere. This is for the right, the right duet on the right game night. Look, that's it. I wanted to go super fast for you. This is like $40, $45, um, maybe $50, somewhere around there. Thank you so much. I'm not going to keep you any longer. I'm going to see you next time. I love you all. Have a great day.